Hello everyone and welcome to another video by us at Digilo Collection. The year is 1982 and the personal computer is gaining foothold in the average person's house. Uh, by now the trifecta of Apple, uh, Tandy um, and the Commodore uh, is pretty strong. Um, the comp their computers are fairly cheap and easy to get. Um, what we have here and what I talk about today is, is a personal computer. But it is done by a company that generally up to that point used to do uh, mainframes, and that is digital. What I have here is a, a digital uh, deck Rainbow 100. Uh, there are some interesting parts about it which I want to talk about. First of all, it is a uh, multiprocessor computer. Yeah, I heard it right. Definitely a unique thing for the time. It has two CPUs. It has an Intel 8088, it's a 16-bit processor and it has uh, the very well-known Z-Log Z80. So it could run software on either of them. That made it fairly unique. Um, the presentation is pretty good. We're gonna show that later. Um, and it could, run, it could uh, run DOS back in the day. It wasn't actually compatible with IBM PC, but it could run DOS. And it could obviously run CPM. And uh, the CPM could choose, uh, see if the application was about to run is 8-bit or 16-bit, not running the correct processor. But why did DEC build this machine? Well, a year prior to this, in 1981, IBM released on the market uh, the IBM PC. And that started basically a revolution. Um, the form factor was interesting, it was a powerful machine, it was a 16-bit machine running, at, uh, running an Intel processor at about 4.77 megahertz, and it started to catch on. And it, probably at the time, uh, the digital realized that they, this is a market they can tap into. So, uh, as a departure from their um, server machines, they produced this uh, Rainbow 100. Uh, there were some problems at the time, of course, because while the machine is uh, software uh, compatible um, with the IBM PC, which what it borrows a lot of uh, spec from, it wasn't uh, low-level compatible. So, uh, since most of the programs at the time uh, written for those were written in assembly, they wouldn't really run. Other things, for example, is, is missing an ISA bus. So the peripherals which you could put in an IBM PC, such as sound cards and so on, um, memory expansion, for example, it couldn't work in here. It couldn't do that. Um, that being said, the machine is pretty powerful. Um, by default, it comes with two uh, floppy drives. Uh, I have an older, uh, sorry, a newer uh, version here. That is the Rainbow 100B that has actually hard disk and can boot from the hard disks. Similar to how IBM released the IBM PC um, XT, which has which, ha which had the hardest, and you, you could boot from it. Um, so let's see what the machine can do. So this is a typical presentation of uh, the, the digital Rainbow 100 back in the day. This is the um, one of the later versions, like I mentioned, the 100B. And the the difference is was it it, was, it came fitted with a hard disk, an MFM type hard disk. That which it could boot from, and then you also have a color monitor, which uh, it's branded digital. However, it is done by Mitsubishi, and I'm going to show you the type of cable that this would connect to. So, and the computer is um, not the usual VGA connector; it's a it's a different one, and then it also has RGB. Um, uh, BNC type connectors that go to, into the monitor and the monitor could have uh, an external sync signal as well or, or otherwise you'll sync on green and the keyboard itself actually connects over here rather than straight into the computer so this is kind of a general display slash input uh, cable fairly unique for the time uh, the, the, the keyboard is actually pretty nice um, pretty good presentation unfortunately it is not a mechanical keyboard um, as, as the IBM uh, PC had, the Model M keyboard is just a normal uh, membrane keyboard. Um, this machine has been used as a word processor. So uh, you notice how the, the, what we nowadays call the function keys, those are actually not function keys, they are just extended keys that they could be programmed for different, different kinds of software. And um, the keyboard is slightly different layout, a different functionality than the normal IBM PC. Coming back to the main box, the, the drives are, are horizontal and they have this kind of interesting design. Um, 
separated by cylinders, you have a drive A and drive B. Um, fairly neat again for the time. Um, this one also comes with a um, dot matrix printer, the LA50 uh, um, that you, you, you could have uh, connected. Uh, the unit inside, like I said, unfortunately does not have an ISA bus, so you couldn't um, expand it to the same peripherals that you would do uh, an IBM PC. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's turn it on, see how how it looks like. All right, let's turn it on. The machine has a very beautiful noise. Oh, we need to turn the monitor on as well. So the, its bias is going to give us an option to uh, boot from whatever drive you want, A, B are the floppy drives, C, D and W. Um, also we can execute a self-test or this machine could also be used as a terminal. So I believe my operating system is on drive D. Let's see, W. Yep, that's it. So it's a MS-DOS version 2.11 uh, done specifically for uh, Digital Equipment Corporation. Um, the date is obviously out of date. Time. Right. Um, this has actually um, a pretty beautiful display. So you notice the scroll, uh, like in uh, IBM PC-DOS, is actually pixel by pixel. So the usual, uh, typical uh, DOS dir command. I do that. So I do have some games here, uh, Pascal. Um, yep. Uh, let's see. Does this run? Turbo. I guess it's. Um, it needs some files for the Fana file press escape. Uh, okay, well, I mean, um, this actually is a color display, um, and there are applications. I have a game here called Otello that is able to display color uh, on this monitor. Uh, the later 1983 versions of the Deck Rainbow uh, support um, CGA-like capabilities for uh, color display. So, what happened to the digital? Well, eventually it fell victim to the popularity of the IBM PC. Um, the fact that it wasn't really compatible at a low level with it caused it over time to lose software. I mean, you could still find um, um, things like um, C uh, development development platform. Uh, this one is called Desmet C by Seaware Corporation. So um, we had some usefulness in the late 80s. Um, it was mainly a business machine, so you wouldn't find that many games. Um, there were some Infocom titles, such as this one here called Suspended, um, that would run on um, uh, either DOS or CPM. But overall, um, the fact that it couldn't be expanded, uh, it couldn't be improved, um, and it um, caused it to not keep up with the advancements of the IBM PC. So eventually, um, DEC uh, stopped the uh, Rainbow 100 line and replaced that with what, used, what, had, what was later called VaxMate. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching us. I hope that was interesting. Uh, subscribe to my channel and see you next time for another video of computer history.